Hey friends, Andrew here. I just wanted to take a moment to let you all know that I made an announcement officially with Valley Christian Fellowship. Last night was our annual family business meeting where we get together, we celebrate the things that have happened in the last year, and we give reports of how different ministries are doing, and then we project the things that we are excited about this upcoming year. When it came to my turn, um, I made the announcement. I made the announcement that I am on a trajectory to leave Valley and to go plant a church. So it's official now. Um, some of you who are probably watching this may have already known I've been talking about it, but now it's it's genuinely up f for conversation, I guess, or just, just officially out there. So um, to catch people up, here is the 11 minute report and yeah. There's going to be more information as time goes on. I know people are asking me questions already, and I, I look forward to just elaborating on more. But uh, yeah, that's that's what I have for you. Oh, also, really quick, um, last night, just for fun, uh, Mike had us all when we he had us all as a church WWE style like celebrate each person who was coming up on stage. So if you if you hear whooping and hollering and it seems really unconventional for a business meeting, uh, that's the context of what's happening. It was actually it was a ton of fun. So anyway, here's that video. Well, hello, church. Uh, welcome to Valley Christian Fellowship, where we are a gospel. <laughs> hey, it just, it just seems like what I have to say every time I'm up here. You remembered it. I know, right? So hey. Uh, everybody. Uh, I was asked to share a report this year for just a uh, ministry. I have not overseen a specific ministry for almost a year, and two years now. It has been uh, really rad, actually, just to do more visitation, to connect with people and do things. But as the year has gone, or since last year, last year I did a lot more advisory and counseling and things like that. But this past year, or I guess the year before, um, I've had the opportunity to, number one, actually work on our discipleship. Uh, you guys have heard some things about huddles and playbooks and stuff like that. I had spent a year reading, studying, and putting together a what we call the, the VCF Discipleship Playbook. Kind of like a, a what we're hoping to be is a, a unified approach to how we will disciple people so we can have unified metrics and, and culture and all these things like that. That took a while to put that all together. And that actually was a lab through a huddle that I, I'm leading right now. And it's been, that's been an amazing process. And if you would like to see it, I think, well, too bad. And I thought it was out in the foyer, but maybe not. You can talk to Denise. She's, she's, she's yes. Yeah. The other thing this year, um, I also got to preach a six-week series. My first series, actually, since Mike has been here. And that was uh, quite the experience to learn how to preach after six weeks in a row, all three services. That was, like, sprinting. And that was super fun. One thing, though, you may have noticed is that um, I have not, there's not a lot for me to share tonight, and this, this, is, this is why. I am on a trajectory to uh, plant, to spin out a valley this year, and this is my official announcement to share with you guys that um, this... You know, I sat down and wrote this out so many times this week, and I ended up writing, a, like, I wrote goodbye letters over and over again, and I was like, ah, I'm not saying goodbye. I'm not saying goodbye. I'm just letting you know that I'm on a trajectory for this year uh, to, to leave Valley and to go plant a church. One of the reasons why is when I first showed up 12 years ago, I, I showed up at Valley. Uh, I had just started seminary. I had taken a church planting class, and God did something different to me. Man, when I was in Bible college, I just wanted to be a youth pastor, then I wanted to go teach youth ministry. I never wanted to be a senior pastor because they constantly just had their, their rears handed to them over and over again. And I was like, I don't want that mess. And, and then I went to seminary. And I, uh, I took a church planning class. And it completely changed my heart on what church planning was about and what it means to be a pastor. And so when I, if you know my story, when I ended up at Valley, I, in my mind, I thought I was going to be here one year. When I was asked to come on staff, I said, I'll give you one year. And that year became 12. And so August of 2020, I was sitting, uh, I was on vacation, sitting at a, by a lake, and I just had this stirring that I knew, like, you know what, it's time. It's time. And so I've been on this trajectory, I, I've been talking to Mike about this since 2020, and uh, you could probably, if you think back now, you can probably see little threads of how this has all been, been coming together. 
I'm so thankful for this church. I'm thankful for a church that took on a 25-year-old kid who was pretty broken and figuring some things out and gave him opportunity to learn, to mess up, to grow. And uh, I'm just, yeah, so that's, I'm, the vision for Valley when I was here working with Lance when he was here was that, or that the idea was that, that Valley would eventually become ascending church. And that, that thematically is something that has been on Mike's heart. And I would be honored to be one of the first to be, to be officially sent out and, and to plant. So to answer some questions, because you're probably wondering, like, where? Uh, after a long, long process, uh, I'm looking at Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. In the mix was Maine, Oklahoma, Kansas, Texas, Oregon, Astoria for some reason. And then... <laughs> and... Uh, I think we need to plan a church in the story sooner yeah, or later. Yeah, yeah. So, and it's it's been a wild ride. I even looked at church revitalization to just take on a, a church and things like that. But after just a long process, uh, it's it's Coeur d'Alene is where is where I'm projected at the moment. Uh, my projected date is actually June of 2025 of this year. That is an arbitrary date. That is a date that I put together because I'm the kind of person that if I don't have a date, I'm not going to do anything. And so uh, God could show up. And it could, be a, it could be later. It could be sooner, but it could be later. All right? So there's, there's that. Um, yeah, I, I love you guys. This is like a good thing, but I just, I, just seeing all you, I have so much deep history here. And uh, this is weird saying all this right now. It's, so, so for some of us, it's, it's some news, right? Like, oh. We're just kind of used to having Andrew, and he's always here, and, and yet this is part of growing up. This is part of being a church that meets the needs of the world, as the world has lostness, not just here. And so we're, we're eager about this. We're, we're figuring out what it all it looks like. Um, I, let's just open up. If anyone does have some questions, now's a good time for some questions if you want to come forward. Obviously, you've got a, a few months uh, to ask questions as well. Um, We've been training. There's still training that has to take place. There's still growing that has to happen. Um, but this is something the Lord's put on his heart, and so we're going to do our best to stand with him in it. So anybody want to come forward for questions? Yeah. Russ says it's time for you to go. <laughs> All right, man. <laughs> So my question is, um, are we working on bringing someone on to fill those big shoes that you fill um, and having you help onboard them so that they are getting a hands-on transition with what that looks like to do ministry the way you've been doing it? Let me answer that. So a um, couple things that uh, you need to understand. Over the last year and a half, you've seen Andrew less responsible for ministry. I've assigned him to projects more than you're responsible for this area. And that's been intentional so that his exit, we're not left saying, oh, who's going to lead this ministry? Because, I mean, if, if he didn't, I mean, this isn't like what we're doing, but if he left tomorrow, ministry-wise, we'd be covered. There, there would be no gap in what is being accomplished. And part of that has been Laura. Laura. Bringing Laura on, she has really relieved the, the kids' ministry that Andrew was responsible for, and she is soaring. She's doing a great job. In fact, uh, we're giving her a raise, but we'll talk about that when we talk to budget stuff, right? But, but truth is, we budget-wise, um, we're going to support him, N not necessarily perpetually at the same level, but for the first year, we basically planned our budget as if he was here when he's not here so that we can send him well. Um, which means we don't just have a, you know, here's the money for a new position. It, we're, we're transitioning in a way that is making it so that there's less of a, uh, a gap here in what he does officially, and, and that money and time will, will free up some of our budget. Now, that doesn't mean that what he does unofficially is uh, just going to be covered, right? Like, he's got a lot of heart. Uh, he takes a ton off my plate. He, he really does. Like, 
Um, a lot of the projects are things that need to get done at Valley that I feel a lot of responsibility for that I can't always get to. Our whole discipleship playbook, you guys, he, he did some incredible work on this discipleship playbook, and it's only now starting to be seen in the, the life of the church. Over the next few months and year, you'll see more and more of what that discipleship structure that he's helped build is going to look like. And so he, he's done a lot of great work, but we're, we've kind of like, we're playing chess, like we're, we're trying to set it up so when he does leave, it's not like, oh, where, where is this associate? No, it's like, oh, this makes sense. And, and it's going to hopefully be not seamless, but as close as possible. Is, is that, Chris, does that answer your question? Yeah. Kind of. Other questions? Or do you want to add to that? Yeah, I just, I really, no one's asked this, and I just really want to stress this, is that uh, Mike, since, since I felt the inkling to, to get out of here, um, I, the moment I came home from that vacation, I, I talked to Mike. And I, Mike has been supportive of this. And the reason why I bring this up is that, you know, classic Southern Baptist church planting was like someone gets ticked and they go, they, they take their ball home and go, you know, this has not been that situation that uh, Mike was the first person to know. And we've just been working through this strategizing because I, I love you guys. I, I meant it when I said it. I'm, I've been never so thankful that this church brought me on when I was 25, and I was really, really figuring some things out. Not that I've mastered anything, but um, I just, I love Valley so much, and it would just be amazing to step into the next era as we have planned this for so, we've dreamt this for so long. Heck yeah, they do. When you say leave this year, do you have an estimated projection date? Yeah, so the question is, uh, what am I projected to leave? And I have been shooting for June of 2025. Uh, in my calendar, it says June 1 is sayonara, as is, it says on my calendar. So uh, that's, that's what I'm looking at. Yeah. Okay. We, uh, so I know more questions. Did Russ have another question? No. Okay. I, I'm sure there are more questions. Uh, we got plenty of time to talk through this. You'll hear more about it in the coming months as we prepare for the launch. And so, again, the, the Sayonara Day is not today. It's, it's months from now. But why don't you guys thank Andrew for his report.